Welcome to this overview of AXO Tools Advanced Features for Technical Illustration. If you haven't yet watched the video on AXO Tools Basics, please do that now. Let's look at two tools not covered in the first video, the AXO Scale Tool and AXO Rotate Tool. In this example, the red background on the label should be a little wider. If we use Illustrator's built-in scale tool, you'll notice that the angles no longer fit the projection. Let's try it again using our AxoScale tool. Notice that there is a cube displayed next to the cursor. This indicates which of the three planes the tool expects to work on. The colors, by the way, correspond to those used in Adobe Illustrator's perspective grid. Tap the Option or Alt key to cycle between the three planes to choose the left face. If we select the label's background and drag, the art is scaled on that plane, anchored at the center of the selection. Press the Shift key and drag along one axis, and it will scale the art constrained in that direction. To scale the other label, tap Alt or Option until the cursor indicates the right face, then select and scale the art. To anchor the scaling at a particular point, click, then move the cursor and drag just as you would with Illustrator Scale Tool. A label like this would probably not be placed so squarely on the box, so let's rotate it a bit. Using Illustrator's built-in Rotate tool, the geometry again doesn't match the plane it's on. I'll undo this, then get the Axo Rotate tool. Tap Alter Option to assign which plane to rotate on, then drag. If we press Shift, the rotation will snap to increments of 15 degrees. That's 15 degrees as projected onto the axonometric plane, not 15 degrees on our screen. As with the Axo Scale tool, the rotation is anchored at the selection center unless we click to place an anchor point. If you press Alt or Option when clicking with the Axo Scale tool or Axo Rotate tool while art is selected, you'll be presented with a dialog. Here you can scale or rotate numerically on whichever plane you choose. Now that we've seen the tools, let's look at some workflow details. For a quick reference as you work, there is an indicator of your current option settings to the left of your cursor to indicate if you've enabled reference points, copying, ellipse adjustment, or widths for strokes. Once you've established the projection of your drawing, the only part of the projection panel you'll really need is the section with the options. To reclaim some screen space, open the panel's Fly Out menu and select the Panel Compact View. You can project your art using menu commands found under Object, Transform, Axonometric. Of course, navigating menus is not faster than clicking a button, but you can assign your own custom keyboard shortcuts to these menu items. Just go to the Edit menu and select Keyboard Shortcuts. In this case, I've chosen shortcuts that make a pattern on my keypad. This way, I don't really need to memorize the keys, just their logical position. Again, these are shortcuts I assigned. You'll want to choose whatever keys make sense for you. As you work in larger drawings, you'll probably find yourself panning around a lot between various views. To save time here, there are shortcuts in the View menu. Go to Axonometric View. Again, I recommend assigning keyboard shortcuts that form an arrangement on the keypad. These shortcuts center your view on the corresponding reference point using your current zoom level and layers. You may want to define a few custom views using Illustrator's built-in views as well. It's easy enough to draw a path and extrude it, but there may be times when you want a simple cube or cylinder to scale and stretch as needed. Just go to Object, Create Axonometric, Cube Primitive, or Cylinder Primitive. The shape will appear in the middle of your screen using your current projection and draw settings. These items are also found in the Projection Panel's Flyout menu. There's something else in that Flyout menu worth exploring. You can rotate art to or from your current X or Z axes. This is helpful for times when you'll want to, for example, shear art or apply a gradient fill with a constraint, two functions that are not yet included in AXO tools. Finally, my best productivity tip. If you regularly start your axonometric drawings from orthographic views drawn to scale, I recommend taking a serious look at CAD tools from Hotdoor. Drawing accurately to scale couldn't be easier, plus it has a ton of tools for mechanical and architectural drawing that you won't find anywhere else. 
No, Hot Door is not a sponsor of this video. I just seriously recommend it for technical illustrators. Watch for more tips and tutorials to come. And thank you for watching.